voiceamerica.com. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101 with host Susan Bartlestone. We're so happy you've joined us this weekend. Over the next hour, you'll learn the tips, tricks, and vital information that'll help you keep yourself confident and safe. Now, here's the host of Crime Prevention 101, Susan Bartlestone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101, the personal safety radio show with the optimistic perspective on a sober subject. And as always, it is my true honor and privilege and pleasure to be here with you once again this Saturday and to spend the next hour with you. And I, I, you can't even imagine how much I look forward to this. And I certainly hope that you had a safe week since we were together last. Now, I hope, just a couple of news items, news flashes. I hope everybody knows by now that I have a brand new host page on the Voice America website, and it is just amazing. You, and if you find the show a benefit, there are so many ways that you can tell people about it. First of all, you can email directly from the website. You can also post the shows directly from the website onto your Facebook or your Twitter accounts. You can bookmark your favorite shows there. You can actually set up a free account there so you can bookmark all your favorite shows. And you can also contact me directly from my host page through email and you can tell me what your thoughts are. And by the way, speaking about Facebook and Twitter, if you are on Twitter, please send out a tweet about us. Tell your friends right now that you are listening to Crime Prevention 101 and that they better tune in. Don't you love this new age? I know I sure do. Now, I have a very special show today, of course. Now, you know, I talk a lot about sexual violence and, and how sexual violence has emotionally and physically scarred the lives of millions of people in the United States. And it, it touches all ages and all economic groups and all races. And by the way, sexual violence doesn't just affect the primary victim of a crime, but the secondary victims as well are affected. The spouses and children, parents, and the friends of the victims are all equally affected. And since 2001, April has been declared National Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And this was done in order to increase awareness about this issue and to encourage prevention initiatives and to increase uh, people's knowledge of what services are avail available to aid survivors. And I've been doing a whole month of programs on different aspects of sexual assault and, and the issues involved here. And today, I'm going to be talking with Lauren Sogor of the National Sexual Violence Resource Center. And this organization is the nation's principal information and resource center for all aspects of sexual violence. And they particularly provide national leadership among advocacy groups throughout the whole month of April. And, of course, they do that, too, for the rest of the year, but I know they are particularly busy during April. And I have with me Lauren Sogor, who is the Prevention Campaign Specialist at the NSVRC, to shorten it a little bit. And Lauren has a Master's in Public Health She's been involved in the anti-sexual violence field for over five years, uh, beginning as a peer educator during her undergraduate school, and she now manages the Sexual Assault Awareness Month campaign for this wonderful organization, and she also serves as a member of the NSVRC Communications Department, and she does the writing and editing of the publications and all that kind of good stuff. Lauren? Welcome to Crime Prevention 101. Hi, Susan. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. I appreciate it. Um, and, and you already covered a lot of the points I was going to mention about what the NSVRC does. I appreciate that as well. Um, I'm really pleased to be here today talking a little bit about uh, the work that we do around Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So thanks again. Oh, it's my pleasure, Lauren. Mm -hmm. Now let's start at the beginning. I've, I've talked about how sexual violence affects millions of people. Can you break it down a little in terms of the statistics? I know you guys must have tons of those. 
Yeah. How bad are we? How bad? What are we? What are we really talking about? Give Give me kind of a breakdown. Right. Right. Yes. I appreciate it. Um, you did mention a lot of kind of the the general impact that it has, and you're absolutely right. Um, you know, in terms of more specific statistics, we do know that between um, w- one in four and one in five women are going to experience some form of sexual violence over the course of their lifetime. Um, that's obviously a huge percentage of the population. And in addition, we have found that one in 33 men will experience some form of sexual violence, which is often um, I think a lot of people kind of forget that, you know, men can be victimized as well. So that's very important. Um, sexual violence impacts children, uh, one in four girls before age 18 and one in six boys. Again, those are pretty shocking statistics to kind of show Indeed. the impact. Um you know, it, it it's as you mentioned before, it, it's something that impacts all all groups of people across the world. But you know, it doesn't matter socioeconomic status, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation. You know, it impacts everyone um, in in a really large way. So I appreciated that you mentioned that. So you know, so those are some of the statistics that kind of talk about you know the impact this is having in such a, a large swath of our society. You know, a couple other things in terms of the specifics of sexual assault. We do know um, in sexual violence, and and when I talk about sexual violence, I want to kind of give the definition there. We're including multiple forms of violence in that. We include rape, um, sexual assault, you know, things like fondling and groping, anything that, any sexual contact without consent. Uh, That Mm -hmm. also includes sexual harassment, stalking, uh, child sexual abuse. So, you know, there are, there are a lot of different things that we include when we talk about sexual violence. Sexual violence, right, as opposed right, to just exactly. sexual assault. Exactly, yep, right. yep. So, you know, it is broad in that sense. But we do know that um, over 75% of these, these acts of, of sexual violence are perpetrated by someone who is known to the victim. And, again, that's mm-hmm. a really, um, that's kind of a common myth is that, you know, that it's a stranger who jumps out of the bushes and attacks. And it's something that I think makes this issue so much more difficult to deal with is that that's not the, the case. I mean, it, it certainly does happen that way, but the large majority of sexual assaults and sexual violent crimes are, are actually happening by someone that the victim knows and trusts. You know, and that's a really scary scary reality, um, but I think it also opens up the door for a lot of, of good prevention work there. So well, this you know, is, those this are some is of one the of specific. the things I think that uh, having a Sexual Assault Awareness Month was designed to do, to bring up these kind of myths. And the reason, you know, because I'm working in this field for an awfully long time, and the reason that these myths keep, pertain- keep um, pervading is because all you ever hear about in the media, pretty much, is the stranger that jumps out of the bushes. And you hear much less what's going on between families and dates and the, you know, the the friend of your boyfriend Mm -hmm. who sexually assaults you and, or, you know, something like that. You, 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 the media gets attention by focusing on the, the horribleness and the bizarre or anything that's got a a terrible twist to it. As opposed to, let's say the more common, kinds of sexual assault. And that, okay. that, that kind of brings me to what is Sexual Assault Awareness Month and, and how did this come about as a national uh, month? Sure. Sure. Yes, exactly. I mean, a, a lot of that, a lot of the reason why Sexual Assault Awareness Month began, which, which goes way back to the 1970s, in fact, um, at the local level, a lot of people started having events, something like a, a large Take Back the Night, which is like a large march and rally. Um, oh, and it, I remember those. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it really <laughs> came out of that, that desire to kind of stop all the kind of myths and, and the victim blaming, you know, that was going on out there and really sort of focus on, hey, you know, why is this going on and what can we do for victims that are experiencing this horrific crime? So, you know, that was kind of the roots of it. Um, it was really grassroots local work being done around Sexual Assault Awareness Month before we even called it that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and it sort of moved 
through and it and that time it too it also you know it, it involved a lot of kind of gen, more general violence against women so included domestic violence and dating violence and and you know kind of moving through the 1980s 1990s folks started to kind of break that out and kind of think okay you know maybe during October let's focus on domestic violence and and it kind of generally moved into a lot of folks started doing events in April around sexual assault awareness and so um it, on into the, the kind of the 1990s, folks were sort of more and more moving in that direction. And in 2000, when the National Sexual Violence Resource Center opened, um, they, you know, our organization really collaborated with a lot of other folks in the anti-sexual violence field, including state coalitions um, uh, and, and state and tribal territory coalitions, a, a lot of folks and kind of did a lot of surveys to sort of see what, you know, how could we bring this to more structure, you know, and have a national month that we could all kind of focus our efforts on this awareness. And so in 2000, 2001, we did a lot of research about that and came up with April for Sexual Thought Awareness Month, uh, identified the color teal as the color for this awareness and, um, mm-hmm. and you know, the symbol being the teal ribbon. So that kind of all happened in uh, at the, kind of the, the turn of the century there around 2000, 2001. And since then, um, the National Sexual Violence Resource Center has been really honored to be able to kind of take on the role of of leading some of that work um, and, and building a kind of a national voice and theme for that. However, you know we do uh, we do work closely with folks all around the all the country that are doing this work to kind of come up each year with you know what are we going to do and what's the theme going to be. But ultimately, SAM, which is kind of what we shorthand call Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And that's really about A A M. Yes, S A A M. A A M. About um, you know raising public awareness both about the crime, its impact on victims. You know who is victimized, as you mentioned before, really breaking down some of those myths that are so pervasive out there, and also to really start to broaden the focus and it involve people in. Hey, you know how how can I prevent this? You know instead of just viewing it as oh, well, it's a women's problem and it's their problem to solve, you know, how can we really broaden that focus and, and really kind of help other people beyond those traditional kind of individual model think about how they can, how, how they can prevent this? Um, so that was really, that's really kind of tell me, tell me a little bit about how the National Sexual Violence Resource Center came about. Are, are you are a nonprofit? Are you... Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. We are a nonprofit. Um, we are actually a project of the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape, PCAR. Um, and uh, in 2000, uh, PCAR was uh, was granted um, funding by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, to open the NSVRC as a national, what truly a national resource center on this issue. Um, and then NSVRC since then has really, you know, been able to develop. We have a huge library of free materials on on so many topics around sexual violence. You know, not just the awareness and prevention, but um, also intervention and response for victims and survivors and all of that kind of thing. So, so we have a library. You know, we, we, um, we do a lot of technical assistance. We have a great team of information specialists who can help uh, respond to email and phone requests for assistance, information, anything like that. So we really, you know, that was kind of how the NSVRC came about. And, of course, we work very closely with PCAR, who is um, our founding organization, mm-hmm. um, to do a lot of this work uh, both at the national and the state level. Well, so there's wonderful. a lot of collaboration. Lauren, let's take a little pause here. Uh, sure. We're going to hear more about Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and I've got some information on how you can help out because it is still not too late to get involved. So fasten your seatbelt. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. News. Opinion. Your voice counts. Call toll-free 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. VoiceAmerica.com. 
There's a purpose revolution sweeping the world. Now more than ever before, in the midst of so many things they could do, people are asking what they should do. Since 1991, John Stanko has been helping people all over the world answer these questions. Now John is bringing his purpose message and philosophy to Voice America, where you will hear from people of purpose like John, who have found what they were created to do. Join John and his guests from around the world every week on his show, Your Purpose Quest, 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern. Right here on Voice America. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.fights. Safe.com for more information. You'll also find information there on Susan's upcoming Crime Prevention 101 Personal Safety Teleseminars. Think fast, talk fast, fight smart. Would stress the many opportunities you have to deter or diffuse a criminal encounter and how to use your brains instead of your muscles in a fight. Look for the new book information or sign up for Susan Bartlestone's Personal Safety Seminars at www.fightsafe.com today. Adding fractions is nothing. For real? Look, these are denominators. You multiply this one so that it's the same as that, then you add them up. Man, that's easy. Charles Bennett dreamed of returning to the old neighborhood as a teacher. But without money for college, only half of his dream came true. He's back in the old neighborhood. Well, enough math. I got to deliver these sandwiches. Please support the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. A message from the UNCF and the Ad Council. Have you ever thought about having your own internet talk show? Well, if you said yes, then click About Us. Then click Be a Host to get more information. Or just call Jeff Spinard at 480-294-6417. Say that again? 480-294-6417. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Welcome back to Crime Prevention 101. And I'm speaking with Lauren Sogar, and we're going to we're talking about Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Now, don't forget to send out a tweet about us if you're a Twitterer, because there's plenty of show left for people to tune in. And at this point in the show, what I always do is I I have I'd like to say as I uh, you know to if you are already a survivor of any kind of crime like we're talking about on the show today or or any other crime for that matter, please remember that nothing that happened to you was your fault. And even if you think that you use bad judgment in a situation and left yourself vulnerable to whatever happened to you, that is never, ever, ever an excuse for a crime or for violence. And I also can't stress enough that there are no right or wrong responses. You know, I should have done this or I could have done that. If you're alive, you responded correctly. And please call yourself a survivor and not a victim and understand that with the proper professional help, you can put what happened into perspective and get on with your life. All right, so now we were talking a little bit about the – types of resources that are available and uh, do you have any any more any uh, more um, resources that the NSVRC uh, makes available to people to for you know for sexual assault awareness month or whatever I know this I, I had what so her, um, I had done a show about bringing in the bystander and lo and behold on your website mm-hmm. I found a book listed. Mm-hmm. And a webinar. 
that's yes, bystander um, training. definitely. Okay. We we do have a, a lot of resources on as you know as you're pointing out. There's you know a wide variety of topics that we cover. In particular, related to Sexual Assault Awareness Month, we actually do maintain a subsite on the NSBRC's main site, um, and the web address for that is www.nsbrc. Dot org slash let me, uh, let me do this. N like Nancy, S like Sugar, V like Victor, R yeah. like Robert. Yep. NSVR dot org. Yep. Great. And um and folks can find on on that SAM section of the site you will find all sorts of resources and information. We maintain each year we actually create a campaign packet uh, in both print and then uh, all the resources are available online. Um, this year the focus is on workplace sexual violence prevention. And so you'll find a fact sheet, um, a guide to doing workplace outreach, um, you know, a variety of other resources related to that specific topic. But then you'll also find on the site information and resources from past years of the Sexual Assault Awareness Month work that the NSBRC has done. In addition, there's a lot of um, information coming from state, territory, tribal coalitions, um, local programs, national organizations that have done their own work around SAM and have various kinds of resources like me media outreach and um, you know how to write a national proclamation or a state proclamation. So there's a lot of stuff that you can find on that site. Um, and finally, we do have a a calendar that we maintain all year um, through the NSBRC site, and we encourage folks to add their April events to that calendar so everyone can kind of see, you know, what's going on around the country and, and part, partake in some of those events if they're local. So that's another resource that we have on there. Um, so there's definitely a lot of stuff online that, uh, that we provide as well as I'm always available to take calls or help people um, kind of navigate their own SAM planning. So that's also a resource that we provide. Now, when I was looking at um, that site, and, and I'm going to give some, also some resources for other places where people can find uh, activities that are going on locally, but um, some very interesting things that people can do to draw attention to Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And uh, a couple that caught my eye, uh, of course, we, Lauren, you and I were talking about Take Back the Night. Right. And, um, that, and, and, and I do remember that going back to uh, the 70s. And those are usually, it's a, it's a, it takes place at night, and, and you can get thousands of people together, because I've been on those. Mm -hmm. Because at nighttime, people are, are always saying to women, you shouldn't be out at night. If you weren't, and, and this goes back to the blaming of the victim again. Mm -hmm. If a woman dared to go out, even, even not even that late at night, and she got assaulted or attacked, and again, here's that stranger component here. Right. That's the, that is not the majority of the assaults. People were, could always say, well, what were you doing out at that hour of the night? And especially if it was late at night and especially if the woman had had a drink or two, you know, this is this was something she's not supposed to do. So take back the night, starting back in the 70s, was where people get, would get together, and mostly it was women, but certainly not only women, and they would march saying that we have a right to take back the night. We have a right to go out at night and, you know, fully participate and live our life. That's where that kind of came from. And then, you know, gradually speeches and stuff were added to it. And it was a very empowering uh, feeling to actually feel safe, you know, being out late at night in, in parks and, and different areas. Do you have any idea how many uh, Take Back the Nights uh, are running this year? I mean, do you keep that kind of record? Oh, you know, I don't. I mean, I know that there are dozens that I've received, um, you know, information about, but I could not even tell you. Um, I'm sure that there's, there's hundreds that go around across the country just because, you know, a lot of local communities, um, that's something that they can do, college campuses. So there are certainly very many that, that do happen. Um, along with, of course, a myriad other kinds of great events to raise awareness as well. Let's talk about some of the others. Now, another, another, another event that I uh, saw, and this was a new one for me, by the way, it was called the Denim Day. 
Ah, yes, yes. The Denim Day is a great um, kind of, yeah, it's sort of a newer um, kind of event that's been going on. And, and I think that the folks, I know of one, one great organization called Peace Over Violence in Los Angeles that, that kind of does maintain a great website for doing Denim Day across the country. But basically Denim Day, um, the, the idea behind that is that um, there was an Italian court case in which a woman was, um, you know, had, had you know, prosecuted against a, a rapist and the court said, oh, well, you know, you were wearing jeans and your jeans were too tight that there's no way the perpetrator could have removed them without your help. Therefore, you weren't assaulted. So it was really, you know, it really got people very enraged. It was a kind of um, very upsetting finding. And what happened was somebody decided, well, you know what, we're going to wear jeans on one day in honor of that case and to show solidarity with that victim um, and with all victims, you know, and and so that's kind of become a chance to kind of show in your community, you know, the idea is you wear jeans and you kind of talk about why I'm wearing jeans, you know, why are we doing this? Um, so that's how that's come about. And that one seems to be take, picking up with a lot of momentum around the country as well. And that, and, that, and that touches on a couple of really critical points. And again, we're going back to the blaming of the victim mm-hmm. because the the fact that the woman was wearing jeans and the, the and the and the Italian court felt that she had to have helped the attacker remove the jeans what happens when you're in a a rape situation and it doesn't matter whether you know the person or you don't know the person mm-hmm. you become frozen with fear if you haven't got any let's say self defense or martial arts training or any of any other option that you can think of that would give you an, a, a method of resisting what was going on. You become frozen in fear, and you do what you need to do to save the person's life, you, to save your life. Mm-hmm. And that means you might have to help them do what it is they need to do to accomplish that rape. It completely discounts, you know, that fear that you fear. Right. And exactly. I had interviewed... Um, Linda Fairstein, if, uh, if you know that name, she's the former sex prosecutor in uh, New York City. She uh, prosecuted uh, all these big cases, Robert Chambers' case and the, the Wolfpack case. And she told me that she almost lost a case because an el- a rape had occurred in an elevator in New York City. And one or two people on the jury didn't believe that you could actually have sex standing up. So they, they, they didn't think it would, could possibly have been a rape. They felt that it would have to have been consensual. Mm-hmm. And she had a, all of these, you know, stereotypes about what's involved, your state of mind, if you're in a situation like that. Mm-hmm. And, and the other thing that I remember very clearly, there a long time ago, and it, it, it may still be, I think this, this one we've managed to dispel, but if a person asks, if a woman particularly asks a man to wear a condom mm-hmm. during the commission of this rape, juries were looking on that again as consent. Same thing. She, tell, she asked him, to, she helped him take off the jeans because he forced her to, she asked him to wear a condom, not because she consented, but because she was scared to death for her life. She didn't want to get AIDS. She didn't want to get a sexually transmitted disease. This was not consent. This was survival. And these are some of the, the things that we're trying to bring awareness to through something like Sexual Assault Awareness Month. You, you heard about these things? Yeah, I mean, certainly, and I think, you know, I, I think that that really, those kind of situations where you hear about the reactions that people have, I think it really sort of reinforces the need not only to educate people on, on the myths around this, but really to, to help, you know, bring in larger scale social change so that people mm-hmm. don't immediately make assumptions about victims and, and place that blame on them, but kind of understand how how our society as a whole supports these kind of violent acts, you know, that it's not just Mm -hmm. because she was wearing something or because of where she was, that it's much bigger than that. And I think... And that she didn't resist. And that, yes, exactly. This is the purpose for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, there's a couple of uh, more 
really cool um, activities that I saw about. And uh, let's take a quick pause here. Okay. And don't go away because we're going to talk about some more activities that people have come up with. And I've got great resources for you on how to find what SAM activities are going on in your local area. So don't you go away. Ask the experts. Call toll-free right now, 1-866-472-5787. Hello? And ask our all-star team to answer your question. That's 1-866-472-5787. Thank you for calling. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.fight. Safe.com for more information. You'll also find information there on Susan's upcoming Crime Prevention 101 Personal Safety Teleseminars. Think fast, talk fast, fight smart. Would stress the many opportunities you have to deter or defuse a criminal encounter and how to use your brains instead of your muscles in a fight. Look for the new book information or sign up for Susan Bartlestone's Personal Safety Seminars at www.fightsafe.com today. In the spirit of Have Couch, Will Travel, Dr. Carol Lieberman creates a haven of sanity in an increasingly insane world. Each day we are bombarded with news of events that have never crossed our wildest nightmares. Society is spiraling out of control and everyone is reeling from it. But now there's an answer. The best way to keep sane in this insane world is to tune in to Dr. Carol's Couch on Voice America. Dr. Carol, a certified media psychiatrist, will broadcast live from her Beverly Hills office every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Call or log in and get help with whatever is sending you reeling whenever you need a soothing voice to calm and advise you. That's Dr. Carol's Couch every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time here on America's Voice, voiceamerica.com. Hey, how you doing? Educational videos, top quality, right here. You'll never hear anyone selling education on the street. Yo, what's up, baby? Want to learn some history? I got live learning, beautiful books inside. And don't expect anyone to just offer you an education. Who needs a high school diploma, huh? And fortunately, you can't buy a diploma from some guy with a briefcase. But there is one way you can get the educational skills you and your family need for free with free family learning programs. Call 1-877-FAMLET-1 for information on free GED, computer training classes, and other family learning programs. That's 1-877-FAMLIT-1. Check it out, check it out. When your GED right here, guaranteed, ma. Come on, check it out. After all, you can't get your education on the street. Free family learning programs from the National Center for Family Literacy. The first step to a better life. Brought to you by the National Center for Family Literacy and the Ad Council. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Welcome back. And if you're just tuning in, I'm talking with Lauren Sogar from the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, NSVRC, and we are talking about Sexual Assault Awareness Month and some of the things that you can do to get involved in this, and if not for this year, for next year, because I really wish I had run this program in May, and you know what, Lauren, next year, you're coming back, and we're doing this in May to give people plenty of time, maybe even February. Work for right. me. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just want to also uh, remind you out there 
Don't forget to check out my new website, SusanBartlestone.com. Uh, it's all brand new and shiny still, and I've got tips and safety tips and resources there for you. And check out my Facebook and my Twitter page because I post videos there and lots of crime prevention resources, articles that I come across. And also, oh, I'm so excited about this, my new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, is now available. And the website for that is 22ndresponse.com because the title actually is Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. And yes, you can do that. Now, to find out more about Sexual Assault Awareness Month activities, the National Sexual Violence Resource Center website is and like Nancy, S. Sugar, V. Victor, R. Robert, C. Charlie.org. There's another great resource called the Prevention Connection, and they are www.preventconnect.org. And there's also the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, which is RAIN, R A I N N.org. And this is a great place, by the way, also to publicize activities that you're, that you're doing. If they have activities from all over the country posted there. And one also, another little tidbit, I found out, too, that April 26th through May 2nd is National Crime Victims' Rights Week. Lauren, don't you think they could have given them another month? They crowd everything into this month. <laughs> it's also Child Abuse Month. I mean, come on. <laughs> Too much crime. <laughs> so I crowd everything together. But if but if your if your group or organization would like to honor uh, or commemorate National Crime Victims Rights Week, the Office for Victims of Crime, which is called OVC, has some great resources on their um, about it on the, and that their um, the Office of Victims of Crime is part of the National Criminal Justice Reference Service. And that's N like Nancy, C Charlie, J John, R Robert, S Sugar dot org, N C J R S dot org. All right, let's go back to some of the activities that you can participate in or organize either this month or next year. Let's talk about Lauren the Clothesline Project because that's another oldie but goodie. It's been around for a long time. Yep. Yep, the clothesline project is a great one. Um, with that, in it's it's taken on a lot of forms over the years, but um, basically the idea is that uh, a group of victims and survivors um, and allies, anyone anyone who's interested, comes together and creates T-shirts that kind of just speak to their own experience, um, their healing process, you know, their victimization, what, whatever they feel is is appropriate. Um, often the T-shirts can be color coded. Sometimes folks will have a different color if the victim was was um, was killed. Unfortunately, if, if she was not a survivor or he or she, um, mm -hmm. other ones for different forms, uh, other colors for different forms of sexual violence, and. Um, and then what happens is that literally they're put on a clothesline and displayed in, in a public setting so that folks can, other people can kind of see, oh, my gosh, you know, this is what's going on. This is the impact it's having on victims. And, and usually there's information provided with the display about the crime of sexual assault and prevention and what folks can do. So, um, so again, that's a great, a great activity, very popular. Um, I think it, it, it seems to have a, a pretty intense impact on people who view it. So oh, I'm sure it would, one. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, a couple other great activities I can just think of off the top of my head. And, and of course, if you're interested in, in learning more, please visit the, the NSBRC SAM site because we do have a full list of these events. Um, but another one, uh, a lot of people try to do something with the teal ribbon, bringing that in, either having some sort of campaign where you ask um, folks, uh, you know, leaders in your community to wear t teal ribbons, for example, asking your law enforcement to tie a teal ribbon to their cars during the month of April, you know, some way to kind of get that association between the teal and the ribbon and, and raising questions about it and then providing information for anyone who, who takes part or who notices the, the teal ribbon throughout. Um, some people have like a human ribbon where they wrap someone in a teal piece of cloth and kind of the person um, kind of 
either stands in one spot or kind of goes around, especially like on a campus, and someone kind of speaks to why they're they're wearing this and what it means. Um, always creative things to do with that. Um, another one that I really like, especially for the context of the workplace campaign, um, is the shop to end sexual violence. And that the concept there is that you go to local businesses, local restaurants, and ask them to donate some portion of their proceeds for a given day or the whole month to a local rape crisis center or a lo- you know some kind of local shelter, um, some victim service provider in the community, and then you know you provide some information at the checkout about why this is being done and you know what is sexual assault and why are we um, why do we why is it so important? So and, you know, those are a couple more ideas for things that folks can do in their in their communities during during April and of course all year as well. Yeah, I was going to say that one. I I really particularly like that because I think that that could last uh, more than just a month, and that's that of course is is the point too. We we don't want these things to be okay. It's April, so here it is, and then you know May we forget about it. That's exactly. that's really you know not that's not what we want. Right. We want April to be the kind of the the, the focal point, but mm-hmm. but. Consider like April the beginning of the year, in right. in terms of of what we can do. Right. For, yeah. I really like that you mentioned that. I think that's and that's again that's really the key to kind of doing primary prevention and doing social change is that you know it's got to be something that happens in the context of of a bigger campaign or project or educational experience for people. So yes, they they can take part in one awareness event, but there's also a workshop all year or there's, you know, some other kind of media are writing stories about it and they're hearing about it from their teachers and their colleagues, you know, so it mm-hmm. is it it's it's all those things coming together. Um right. that this really is not just one one month. <laughs> right. You know. Mhm. All right. Let's see. If we, can we uh, think of any any more that are um, that are kind of easy to put together or um, or really do make an impact? I still I'm, I'm wearing denim. I'm telling. You, I may wear denim the whole month. <laughs> uh, that I thought that was just amazing to me. Yeah. Um, you know. I mean. There's another another idea is uh, what we call restroom campaigns. Um, having you know some sort of sign or information put up in, in the stalls and bathrooms in an office building or in the community center or on a college campus. Uh, with that one, you need to make sure that, you know, you're getting permission from the building owner to do that. But, but often uh, that, that's a very popular choice that you have some kind of tear-off that has rape crisis center information on it um, or other information about the crime. Um, you know, poster campaigns are very popular. Uh, I know one of my favorites is um, – my strength is not for hurting, which comes out of um, the men can stop Coalition. right. Yep, and men can I've stop had right. I've had them on uh, twice on the show. I I know that they're doing a lot. Uh, of, in fact, they had a big conference uh, just recently. Yep, and I was actually there. It was it was the last two days, Tuesday and Wednesday. So it was a great conference. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. You know, there's a lot being done out there in terms of poster campaigns that people can adapt, you know, get and adapt for their own community or their campus. You know, that's another great option. Um, certainly doing intensive, you know, kind of trainings or workshops around, I think in particular around kind of bystander intervention and, you know, what can, what can people really individually do short of the like, oh, I don't rape people, so it's not my problem. You know, it, it's bigger mm-hmm. than that. So, there's a lot out there on that. We have one of the pieces of this year's SAM campaign out of the NSVRC includes a workshop for bystander intervention. So, I mean, those kind of things are also events that that uh, are an option for people during April. Now, I know that in, in New York where I live, um, and I, I speak to a lot of the schools that teach self-defense, and I kind of ask them to please give free, uh, you know, just like a three-hour uh, sexual assault awareness month, self-defense class, or rape prevention for anyone that wants it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I was looking through the RAIN uh, website, because R-A-I-N-N.org has listings state by state as well. Uh, I know that uh, the NSRVC uh, website's got it, and they've got a great uh, website, too, so you can go right there and find out what's going on in your state. Mm-hmm. And 
there are not as many self-defense uh, classes during April as I would have liked to have seen. Mm-hmm. So I know that a lot of women in my audience are teachers and men too. Mm-hmm. And uh, come on now, guys, is that there's time left. Let's get some classes going, free classes for the community, three-hour workshop. Give people some options. I'm, I'm very, uh, I, I think I need to get more involved next year and in getting some of those going. Yeah, and I certainly think, you know, those provide a great opportunity to kind of do both the education on, you know, how do you kind of, how, what is risk reduction and how do you kind of help protect yourself, but also the, you know, the as you've mentioned um, before, you know, the kind of avoiding the victim blaming and, and kind of getting that message out there that even if you don't feel prepared, you know, even with training to, to kind of fight back that that's not your fault and, you know, that here are some other resources. Mm-hmm. And I think also, you know, that piece about true primary prevention and, and what it really takes to, to stop this before it ever happens, you know, so I think that's a great opportunity to kind of, you know, have have all of that information covered um, as well. All right, Lauren, we'll be right back after this quick pause with more information about Sexual Assault Awareness Month, so stay tuned. Have you ever thought about having your own Internet talk show? Well, if you said yes, then click About Us. Then click Be a Host to get more information. Or just call Jeff Spinard at 480-294-6417. Say that again. 480-294-6417. VoiceAmerica.com. Hello, we're Mike and Susan. Hello, I'm Catherine. We are the March of Dimes 2008 National Ambassador family. Although Catherine was born extremely premature with many challenges, today she is a healthy five-year-old thanks to the March of Dimes. I'm Don Germano, Senior Vice President of Kmart Stores. Kmart is proud to support March of Dimes' mission to help moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Please make a donation at any Kmart or at marchforbabies.org so that one day all babies are born healthy. Divorce, child custody, support, and visitation, division of property, attorneys, court. Just the thought of divorce is stressful enough. Never mind the combative, destructive, and expensive process. Is there a better way? Yes, divorce mediation. On Divorce Mediation, Myths and Facts, host Philip Mulford, one of the country's top divorce mediators, will discuss this incredibly successful alternative. Formerly a practicing attorney, Philip will explore the myths and facts about a process that has kept his clients out of court and saved them thousands of dollars. If you aren't familiar with divorce mediation or your lawyer has told you it's not appropriate for your case, this show is for you. After listening to Divorce Mediation, Myths and Facts, you'll tell anyone considering a divorce. Go to mediation first. Divorce Mediation, changing the culture of divorce. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.fightsafe.com. Safe.com for more information. You'll also find information there on Susan's upcoming Crime Prevention 101 Personal Safety Teleseminars. Think fast, talk fast, fight smart, which stress the many opportunities you have to deter or defuse a criminal encounter and how to use your brains instead of your muscles in a fight. Look for the new book information or sign up for Susan Bartlestone's Personal Safety Seminars at www.fightsafe.com today. News, opinion, your voice counts. Call toll-free 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Welcome back to Crime Prevention 101. 
And I'm talking with Lauren Sogor from the National Sexual Violence Resource Center. And I am going to post a, a link um, to all of the resources that I've been talking about today on my SusanBartlestone.com website. So you will be able to find them there as well as going to NSVRC.org mm-hmm. and get them there. And I'll post, I'm going to post them on my Facebook page, too. I post a lot of crime prevention information there. And I have one other good resource that I think you might like, and this is, comes from the U.S. Department of Defense. And they have a project called Sexual Assault Prevention and Response. And it's www.s like sugar, a apple, p peter, r robert, dot, m like mary, i india, l larry, saper dot mill, backslash homepage. And they also um, can provide you with a lot of information about SAM activities that um, are, are going on around that they have uh, organized and I think that's great. I'm glad the Department of Defense is getting involved in this. Mm-hmm. Now, before we uh, we wrap up, let's talk about now the the NSVRC honors 12 individuals uh, with awards for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Talk a little bit about those awards and and who gets the, an award. Sure, sure. Um, this is actually a, a great a great opportunity we feel to kind of recognize individuals across the country that are doing this work all year, all the time, you know, really dedicated. Um, so what we do, this is called the Visionary Voice Award, and what happens is that the NSPRC actually asks state, territory, and tribal coalitions to select a winner using whatever process they like um, from their state, and and we just we actually just take the winner and we provide them with the award. So it's really a, a process that we allow, that we want to happen on the ground, you know, with the people that are actually doing the work that are most familiar. And then we just like to, to get that word out about, the, about this hard work. And so um, while there were 12 winners this year, there's certainly no limit. Um, we, we, one day we hope that we will have 56, one from every single state and territory. So um, mm. we, cer- we certainly want it to, to continue to grow, but it's just a great opportunity to give, give some, some national recognition to people that do this work um, so hard, you know, all year. So that's that's kind of the the reason why we we have that Visionary Voice Award. And if you're interested or you know someone that you think would be a great option, we we certainly encourage you to contact your state coalition um, or territory or tribal coalition. You can find the list of the state and territory coalitions on the NSVRC site um, and, and can reach out that way. So that's a little bit about the award process. Is there any one particular uh, a, a person who got an award that comes to mind to give people an idea of the kind of things that uh, you're that might you know be worthy of getting that kind of an award? Right. Um, I mean, I certainly what I've seen a lot in in the in the selections this year in particular. You know, just a lot of people who do great victim advocacy work. Um, we had a couple of people who aren't really traditional victim advocates but have really worked in, in, in unique ways to support it. We had a statistician um, who kind of provides pro bono stat- statistical work and evaluation for their local center. Um, you know, we have nurses, for example, sexual assault nurse examiners who are special forensic trained nurses for this. Um, you know, we have, uh, I think we had an attorney general, former attorney general, who really, uh, you know, worked on behalf of victims for this issue. So, you know, there's really a wide variety um, of people who who just impact positively the movement and the victim um, victim advocacy field in such great ways. So there's really no limits. Uh, we encourage if you have any ideas to, to please, you know, reach reach out and, and recommend them. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Lauren, I, I can't thank you enough for coming uh, on the show with me today, and I hope we've given people a, a real good idea of some of the things that they can that you can do out there, that you can do to, to get on board with this. And it's not limited to women, because everyone should participate in this as far as I'm concerned. So yep. thank you so much again. Thank you. It's uh, been a pleasure. I'm going to do it again next year, nice and early. (laughs) Great. 
So uh, before uh, before I close, uh, just a couple of tips uh, that I want to give out. Uh, if you know somebody that has been sexually assaulted, here's a couple of things that you can do to help. Uh, the most important thing, listen sympathetically and just be there for the person. Don't try to fix the problem. You can't. Just offer support. Let that person know that they are not alone. You can also call a local crisis center for support and options, and they will be very helpful. And I also want to try to get that person to speak with a crisis counselor because, truthfully, it's only with proper professional help can you really put what happened into perspective? You've got to have that piece. But if they're not ready at the, at the moment, if they refuse, that's okay. Just be there for them. That is absolutely critically important. Reach out and hold that person's hand. Send flowers or a small gift. It's okay. Uh, Look, watch uh, to see if they're developing signs of post-traumatic stress disorder. And if you don't know what that is, you can find out all about it. There are plenty of resources for that to tell you exactly what to look for. Offer to contact friends or family, but uh, only do so if the survivor tells you that they want you to do it. And by the way, a lot of these tips came from hopeforhealing.org, another great resource. Well, we're coming to the end of another show, another great show. Please make sure to check out the nsvrc.org website. It's going to also be posted on my susanbartleson.com website. All the past shows that I've done are also archived on that website, So, and you'll find show notes and when you get to SusanBartlestone.com, don't forget to check the safety tips page. I've got a lot of useful information there I think that you'll find. If you have a question for me, if you'd like to comment on today's show, or if you've got a topic for a future show, if you've got a safety concern that you'd like some help with, just email me. You can do it. You can ask Susan B., through my website, or you can email me solutions at fightsafe.com. I also want to remind you, I'm going to be hosting a forum on womansavers.com. And I did a great show with Woman Savers back on Val was my Valentine's Day show, February 14th. Got to check that show out. They're an amazing website, just really helping women. Lots of safety information on there. And look for my forum, womansavers.com. Next week, I'm going to be talking about how to use your cell phone to fight crime. You are not going to believe this. All the things that you can do with the cell phone, and I've got hundreds of stories and incidents that I've collected. I'm going to talk about some of them and tell you what you can do, and especially if your cell phone has a camera. Now, you're not going to want to miss this show. In fact, it would be a crime not to listen. So stay tuned and stay safe. We hope you got some useful information and inspiration this week on Crime Prevention 101. Susan Bartlestone invites you to join us again next Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time and 2 p.m. Eastern Time here on Voice America. Have a great weekend and a safe weekend.